in actual fact, global institutions are probably uh, quite severely under allocated to Asia. So most of them have under 10% exposure across the Asian landscape. And this is obviously not everyone. There are some um, institutional investors who are a lot higher than that. But the typical institution would have under 10% uh, in Asia, and in fact, 60 to 65 percent of their portfolios would be dominated by the U.S., uh, which has obviously been a great place to invest over the last uh, 20 years or so, um, particularly given what's happened in technology. Uh, and so, so that's been a great ride. But the question most investors are asking today is: Is that still the right thing to do? Right? And you know, if you look at a classic institutional portfolio, you're going to have uh, that dominance of the U.S. Uh, featured in their portfolios. You're going to have a decent chunk allocated to Europe. Um, and then there's a little bit in Asia. But obviously, as we all know, um, the U.S. and Europe remain highly correlated. You have macroeconomic and fiscal policies, which are actually very synchronized. And therefore, the way these markets move uh, tend to be in sync. And so the real question for global investors is, you know, where do we go to find a different source of returns? And that's where I think Asia is back in the limelight in terms of something to explore. 